Hello everyone, it's Matt here and this video is going to be something different to what I normally do and it's going to be looking at this. This is the Micronos Z Time. Um, this is actually a Kickstarter edition um, because I backed it at Kickstarter level uh, way back in the day um, and I have not only bought this but I also bought the little charging station as well. Um, so I'm going to uh, actually give these away uh, later uh, today to one of my friends from my old place at work so uh, because he liked it but it was a bit mm, about the price so um, I'm going to give that to him as a Christmas present um, but the point of the video is going to be looking at the whole if you like environment uh, surrounding uh, the device uh, or smartwatch depending on what you'd like to call it and a few other bits and pieces and my experiences with it because I've had a bit of an arduous journey um, with uh, the Z time and a few other bits and pieces. And yes, the video is late, I did want to do it earlier, but I've been compiling a few bits and pieces in the background, so uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. And the first thing that's coming up is what the box looks like and the contents. And here are the boxes for the Z time products. Uh, this is actually the main one, and this is actually for a small charging stand. I'm actually going to go into this one first. There's actually a little security seal at the bottom, which, if you carefully peel away, shows you the charging stand here, and then the charging cable. And it's, don't get me wrong, it ch does charge um, your smartwatch, but the issue is, is that this angle isn't very good to actually sort of place the smartwatch on because it because because the way to be actually kind of wants to slope for, uh, sort of slide down if you like um so this really should have been a more of a gentler angle um and it just would have been a bit better i think it does its job but that's you know the problem with that very nice uh, looking box there's not much else to say to it you know it just says what's included um a bit of the licensing information very plain very simple very much almost like an Apple um, iPhone, I, uh, iPad box, if you like, with the branding and the design, but very similar to that. Um, but the main one, the sort of Zine Time box, this really does scream sort of like luxury item. It's all in black, uh, grey, or white, um, and a bit of red. And it's very sort of smooth. It's, there's a little thing about where it's for. You go, that's actually sort of. I imagine sort of a reference for where it's been shipped to, so that's Great Britain and Surrey Hall. Um, but it's actually held on by magnets at the side here. And then if you open it up, you have the uh, sign sort of saying, Z Time has come to make it yours, and it sort of gives you what you can actually do. Um, so obviously put that to one side, then have a foam insert, which then protects this bit. And this bit actually has quite a few little bit interesting little bits and pieces. So we have an alternate strap here. Uh, this one's in white with a uh, ribbed pattern. We actually had the smartwatch here. So that would have been there. There's actually a little clear little disc which would have protected the smartwatch. We have the enclosure for the actual charging stand, which I'll uh, show you in a little bit. And then we have the cards. And underneath that, there's actually a cable. But here is all your warranty information, your get started packs and everything else. So should there be any issues, you can actually use this to get that information. Um, and again, it's really nice. It feels nice and soft. Um, I'm not sure how well this is actually going to come up on camera. But it's really nice, soft, sort of felty feel to it. There's actual hard foam underneath, but they've lined it on the top with this very nice sort of like furry foam almost. And it just gives it a really nice sort of luxurious feel to it, even though, you know, it's not the most high end of high end smartwatches, but it is still, it's nice that they went to this sort of effort, um, in my opinion. And, you know, there's not a lot to say here. It's very nice. It's very easy. Um, I'll actually go into the cards a second. Um, for that, and that. I have actually gone into these cards once, I think, for warranty information. Um, so... We actually have a, and I won't show it off, but there's a little thing there which is sort of like a discount code off their store because I'm a Kickstarter backer. Um, and then we have the two-year international warranty and products swap. 
and it says applicable on Z time ordered on Kickstarter only and I've already actually used that at least once and I think that's just a plain standard card um, I don't think there's actually anything to it uh, no um, then we have a little thing about the uh, Z time app on the smartphone which I'll go into later um, and yeah that's pretty much it inside the there's nothing really else uh, to it um, but yeah it's a nice little bit of packaging but got the branding on pretty much every single uh, thing so that says Z time the actual cable itself has the logo there and then Z time written on the plastic so you can cl clearly tell it's Z time they've uh, certainly not hidden that away anywhere so I'll just put that back and then put the box back together and then that again has that nice sort of fuzzy felt and I always put that down that way to protect the contents of the box um, and the card it actually just says thank you on one side and then sort of says uh, how to make it yours so it's got uh, removable watch straps and swap them around and it says you can attach it and charge it download the app then wear it with start and then share your experience using the hashtag my um, so yeah it's a very nice sort of presentation it's you know clearly a lot of effort and thought has gone into it um, but you know presentation is one thing but actual performance is another so uh, let's now have a look and discuss the performance uh, of the Z-Time and how well it works okay so now the boxes have been looked at why did I pick the Z-Time um, over other smartwatches or why did I kickstart that instead of just buying a regular smartwatch well for me I do quite like analogy sort of stuff so in a digital world it's a bit weird to have something with actual physical moving parts like an actual uh, watch mechanism and that's what put the Z time apart from everything else and there's a few other bits as well I mean a lot of the smart watches I've from what I've seen seem to be more of a here's a fitness tracker with some clock with a watch functionality built into it it's not this is a watch but it can do this um, and that, that's the thing with the smart watch it's supposed to be something which in my opinion it's supposed to be something which tells you the time but also might give you notifications or might show you that you've got some emails or might show you that you've walked so many steps a day it shouldn't be you've walked 10,000 steps oh and it's you know 807 or something you no know, it should be that it's a watch first but the other functionalities are nice to have and is an addition and it's supposed to be something to improve you not something you should be looking at every five seconds to see you know if you've done this or that um and that's something with the watch as well just it's a very physical thing it's because it has the clock hands and it's something that just in my opinion puts it apart uh, from the other smart watches I mean the stuff about battery life and that sort of not you know I'm not too bothered about because obviously you know as soon as I can come home I can put it on charge or I can put it on charge at work or stuff like that you know it's not too much of an issue for me but it's also the way it was sort of like branded as well it's just like it's a watch but it does this whereas a lot of other things sort of like look well, everything you can do oh and it's a watch you know it's that sort of mentality of oh it's a watch second compared to everything else and that's kind of why I preferred the Z time um, and the you know moving on from that um, I should point out that the Z time you see is not the first one I owned I did upload a photo, um, I think it was to Instagram about the Z time a while ago, um, like when I first had it, and you know I started using it and everything was okay, but it was starting to play up a little bit, and I was just like, well, maybe it's just you know picking up some like clothing and it's picking up some static charge and it's doing stuff that way. Um, and it kind of snowballed um, and Brick Live NEC 2017 when I was helping prep up um, it actually went then um, and the touch screen just didn't work properly it was I mean it would, some of it would work but you'd randomly pick up uh, stray currents and that sort of stuff and it was acting on its own so it'd be even if there's nothing touching it it'd start doing stuff and I was just like that's not right um, so I got in contact with um 
Micron Arson sort of said, you know, this is what's happening with my C time, and they wanted the video, so I did shoot the video, um, which will be on display if I've still got a copy of it. Um, and then it was just a case of, yeah, that's not right. We'll send you another one, um, and then you can send us the original back. So I was just like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's fine. Um, waited, I think it was about three to four weeks. Um, I obviously bear in mind uh, the issue with the Z-Time is it's still got some hand assembly because it's a because it's actually got uh, a physical component inside and they have to be a bit delicate, more delicate because of the um, touchscreen and the actual display. Um, so it took a while and bear in mind as well uh, because I'm a Kickstarter I, I have a special backplate that says Kickstarter backer as well um, or Kickstarter edition I think it is. Um, so they did all that and eventually it arrived and I was just like ooh a package from uh, from Switzerland and I was like opening it up and it was there it was it was a uh, Micronos it was uh, I had a look at the back kick, uh, Kickstarter edition you know the only thing that was different between them you know that you could tangibly see was just the serial number um, or the, the reference number of it. it that was different but everything else was pretty much the same sort of like Kickstarter edition you know designed in Switzerland made in China or something like that but you know, the service was fantastic as well. I mean, it did take a while to arrive, don't get me wrong, but then you've got, it's an individual one that's been specifically assembled for a specific person. It might take a while, uh, which I can kind of get that. And to be honest with you, you know, the service of Micronus was just a case of, oh, okay, that's weird, you know, did I, can you give me some proof? And when it's shown in proof, yeah, oh, that's fine, we'll send it off. You know, there was no sort of like, you know, why do you do this, why do you do that, you know, it's just like, oh yeah, you know, we'll get you another one, it'll be repaired, you know. It's service like that, which I think sets, you know, Micronus and the Z-Time apart from um, other things. So, moving on from that to the overall experience uh, with the Z-Time. Z-Time, the Z-Time itself was good, but there's other things, you know, I want to go into. Um, which ha some of them have their own thing, um, but overall the Z time I thought was really, you know, it's a nice, um, nice smartwatch. It's well put together. It's got a really nice good weight to it as well. It's not it sort of wears the weight to it. It is, you know, it's got a nice metal body. You know, it's got a quite nice weight to it because of that. Um, it looks good. Um, the interchangeable straps are really nice. Um, I picked one in, I think the black was the default, and I picked one in white as well to complement. So it was like uh, white or black. Um, but you can, this is the thing, you can buy other straps on their website and do that sort of stuff. So that was really nice. But it was just a case of, well, you know, you know and it's this sort of and that. But. The heartbeat tracker as well, that was quite good. That seemed to be, uh, to be quite accurate as well, uh, even though it was only um, light sensing. So it, I think what it would do is it would brought, there was a little, um, there was a light uh, source underneath, which was LED, and it would pulsate, and then it would read, and there were two sensors either side of that, and it would read uh, what was coming, light was refracted back, I think it was, and that seemed to work quite well. Um, and like the tracking of it, the physical tracking, so like the steps and miles and that sort of stuff, was okay. Um, but like a lot of things, it's a smartwatch on your wrist. It's not tracking your actual steps, it's just counting movement. So if I'm doing that with something, it's counting steps. Um, but it did seem to be a bit more accurate than other things. I'm not saying it necessarily was, uh, but it does seem to be a bit more accurate. And if I was comparing it to, say, Google, maps and tracking out how many uh, sort of miles I've done it seemed to correlate with that really well it wasn't just Google, Ma Google Maps said I'd walked 0.8 of a mile and uh, the Z time said it was a mile it said it was 0.83 or something or something you know weird like that where it's just like within a good tolerance um, <clears throat> but one of the uh, the couple of things that I want to talk about as well because obviously it's a smart watch so it's got to have a battery um, so the battery life and uh, Micronos made a good claim about the Z time and the fact that it was three days as a smartwatch or 30 days I think it was as just a regular watch. Um, so from my experience 
it was roughly about two, I'd have said two to two and a half days on battery uh, as a smartwatch and then probably about 25 or so um, as just a regular watch. But obviously there's a few pointers to point out. Um, you might say battery by turning off Bluetooth, for example. So when I, what I did was my, with my Z time, most of the time, you know, there are a few things I did test with it, but most of what I did was have it in watch mode. So it track, so it sort of track your stats, like fitness and that sort of stuff. And you could use it as a heartbeat sensor. Um, but what I do is I, every couple of days, activate Bluetooth on my phone, uh, link it up with the Z time, go into the app and pull the data down um, so the app would update and I could sort of track it using the app um, and that just sort of saved having it on the smartwatch so it's actually so the smartwatch has actually got a reasonably good memory in it so you can actually save a, a few days worth and then import it into the phone so even if it's not on display on the watch it is available for the app um, so I found that so the Z time might only display I think it's like three days worth of activity but the watch would pick up like five days or something and it would be really good um, from that aspect. Um, and the battery life, I mean, this is the whole thing with battery life is that, you know, as a smartwatch, it's one of the things where, you know, if you're wearing it continuously, then you might have a bit of an issue with trying to get it charged. But the Z time, I wore it for work and then took it off, so I didn't really have an issue with battery life. And, you know, I mean, the three days on smartwatch and 30 days uh, as a regular watch i think uh if you were just an average consumer i don't think it'd be too accurate but at the same time i don't think it's that inaccurate that it's a lie as some uh, other brands um have come to about some of their products and sort of like you know it's the best cleaning ever it cleans everything and then you just like mm, doesn't um with it's sort of like I'd say it was roughly to within 90% of their, you know, if they were saying it was 100% and it does this, I think you're probably going to get about 85-90% um, out of your own disease. And obviously this is the whole thing. The battery is a physical component, so there's differentiations um, in assembly, there might be a different person assembling it, might be different, some of the components might be slightly better in this batch compared to that batch, and all that sort of stuff. So there is some natural variance within batteries anyway. Um, so, I mean, for, you know, I mean, the battery life, you know, as far as I'm concerned, was very good, you know, um, and it seemed to be better than a lot of other smartwatches as well. Some people are just like, you, what, what, three days? Why are you going to last two or something like that, you know? So, from that aspect, I think the Z time was quite good. Um, and the one thing that wasn't so good um, was the app. Um, so, obviously, I've, talked, I've made reference to it before for data, but essentially, you managed your Z time. You could manage your Z time through touch, the touch screen and the buttons, but personally, you you managed it better using the app. So you'd use the app to assign what you could use the app, similar to what you could do on mo most of the functionality you do on the the um, smartwatch as well but you could do stuff like designing a custom smart uh, face for the watch so you could actually change the background so I often had it as a power up um, or you could use some of the inbuilt ones and you can tweak some of the inbuilt ones so you could have that backdrop but maybe have that date format and maybe have this or maybe have this step counter on it as well and you could really just customize the display to how you wanted it which a lot of smart watches you wouldn't be able to do, but the smart watch is different. You could, you know, track obviously all your physical activity. So I think it was like steps, miles, and that sort of stuff, and calories burnt. I think calories burnt was just like a calculation, but you know, it'd be good for starting to track that sort of stuff. And you could do a few of the bits and pieces as well. So you could, um, you know, download firmware updates. You know manage music remotely um, using a smartwatch. I think you went through the app to control the phone and that sort of stuff. Um, but the one thing that didn't work well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, was the camera. Um, so to give you, you know, a bit of thing, the app itself for the Z time actually has its own inbuilt camera, um, which I was just a bit, uh, 
Because I was just like, well, the functionality sort of says I should be able to take a photo using my smartwatch. So I can set it up and then just go dick and it takes a photo. So the problem with that is that it has to be the Z Time app that takes the photo, which isn't made abundantly clear. You know, I would have thought, oh, it's just going to send like a shutter command or something, you know, like you can with the Bluetooth um, uh, clickers. Uh, no, it's actually you press it and the app takes the photo um, and that's it. So you can't, for example, adjust the smartwatch for the photo and then just press your smartwatch to take the photo. So say like you were holding something, you can't adjust it using the phone and then just go that. It's just using that and then maybe take it away and do that. It's, you know, so you have to do certain things with it and it's just like well that's not really the whole point of having you know a lot of shutter function it's supposed to be that you can use the inbuilt app or a custom app and just have it as a trigger for taking a photo rather than here's something you can do with it and i'll just like that's not really that great as a function because it means you've got to have the app running and the app itself for the camera function was all all right, but it wasn't as good as a level as say the inbuilt camera on my S7 or the open camera app which I use. And it sounds just like well, there's no real point using the smartwatch to take photos or to trigger the photos because I can do that better with my clicker, and I can do it using the actual open camera app or the inbuilt camera app, and it will take better for. And the photos were all right, but the inbuilt one and the open camera app were just slightly better. Um, so that was one of the that was one of the big drawbacks, as far as I was concerned, with some of the functionality uh, from the Z time. Um, so I think it's time to look at the conclusion. And effectively, what has come away with is the Z time. Is a good smartwatch. Don't get me wrong. You know it's got great functionality. It's got a fantastic battery life. Um, but there's just little bits on the corners which are just like, oh, that's not as good as everything else. And that's what sets the Z. You know that's what degrades the Z time. As far as I'm concerned, it's just like you've got this functionality but it's not as well implemented as the fitness tracking or the watch face designer or stuff like that. And it's just like, well, that's better than everything else. And that's good and that's good. But this is just like, why have you done that and not done it like this? And it's just like, well, you know, and this is the whole thing with these time. It's just like, it's a very good smartwatch, but it could be better. And I think you can say the same with most set of I mean, with the Z time, I think it's nice percent there, but it's that ten percent, that little odd bit which doesn't quite work how it should. That just takes, you know, some of the glamour and the shine off uh, the Z time. So, if I was going to give it, I don't know, marks out of a hundred, I'd probably say eighty-five. You know, it's a good product. It does what it says on the tin or the advertising, but there's just a few little bits and pieces which don't, you know, tie in uh, quite so well. So um, that's my review for Z-Time. And uh, I'll see you later. So, bye.